So the first game on the list is going to be Slither.io, and to me, it's one of the most fun games you can play. The ba basis of the game is to collect small orbs and get more points, or try to get the high score on the leaderboard. And to do that, you either collect small orbs or the big orbs, or the orbs that are like flying around like you see there. So basically, the small orbs are just spawned. You can find them anywhere. As soon as you spawn, you just start collecting them. The uh, flying orbs are just spawned around you, and the way to get the flying orbs, which go a little bit faster as you get closer to them, is for you to go faster. And that's done by either pressing spacebar or the left mouse button on your mouse. The only downside to going much faster is you have less control of your snake, hit other snakes irrationally, meaning it could be by accident because you're going too fast. You also lose score, and that's a big issue. Like your your back end of your tail loses um, orbs, and as you keep clicking, as you keep holding the left mouse button, it constantly loses more and more orbs. So you don't want to keep holding it forever. You don't want to keep losing all these orbs that you have just gained back. The last way to gain score is by killing other snakes or collecting the leftovers of other snakes. And when you kill a snake they produce big orbs and those big orbs give so much more points than other small orbs or even the flying ones and that's your whole goal the bigger you grow the more snakes you need to kill the more basically you get a higher score there's a couple strategies to the game where you can start off and you can literally just collect small orbs and then play it safe the whole game the second strategy is you can go straight to the middle and collect leftovers because approximately there's 350 people in this whole arena and most of them are clumped in the middle trying to do the same thing and if you're smart enough and you play safe you can collect the leftovers and also kill snakes at the same time and you can grow from 0 to a score of 5000 in seconds which some people might take I don't know 5 minutes doing it the long way so if you're impatient you can do that the real strategy I think is it's like the rabbit in the hair steady wins the race and I think that's how you have to play the game you have to play it safe you have to really watch out for other people and see how like where they come from you have to make quick snap decisions and just be careful all around because honestly one wrong mistake and your half an hour of progress could go to waste because you made a stupid mistake or someone else made a stupid mistake and that's basically how you play this game. The next type of game is of course no other than Bubble Trouble and I'm just going to restart it really quickly but this is one of the games that I think was very much a classic. Uh, you played it a lot in either high school, elementary school or when you had free time and I just remember this game so well and to me it was one of the greatest time wasters because you would get addicted to it like regardless what you say you will play this for hours trying to get better and better especially play if you play with your friends like with two players it's a co-op option and for this type of game I don't know I found this such a classic game to play you can go on for hours and hours and hours and literally Every time you die, you're gonna be like, okay, no, I can way do way better next time. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way this game is gonna beat me. And I'm not sure how many levels this has now. Like, there's always been new versions of this game, but the goal of it is to try to avoid the falling bubbles while also killing them by pressing spacebar. And the spacebar releases this kind of chain into the air, and you try to knock the bubbles out of the air. And that's the whole basis of the game. And it's not, it's very simple. It's way more simple than like Slither or any other game that you're gonna play. But I think it's one of the harder games once you start playing it a lot, because the goal is easy. Can you survive long enough to get to, let's say level 15 or 20? It gets really hard at that point. So my third game on the list is gonna be Bloons Tower Defense. And honestly, any variation of tower defense is fun as a time waster itself like it's fun to put up defenses and try to beat the enemy before they reach a certain point where you lose lives for this game the main objective of balloons tower defense is to prevent balloons also which are known balloons 
from reaching the end of a defined track on a map, which consists of one or more entrances and exits for the balloons. Um, you can choose a different variety of towers and traps in order to prevent the balloons from reaching the end of the track, and you gain points for every balloon popped, which you can use to upgrade the defenses or um, build more build more towers and build better towers. They follow a certain set track on the map until all the exits have been reached or they are popped. There's a huge variation of balloons. There's blue, green, yellow, and etc, etc, and they become harder and harder to pop. Up to rainbow balloons, ceramic, blimps, which are often referred to MOAs, which take a lot of power to kill. And the main defensive utility you have is the towers, but you also have these pineapples which explode at the end, which you can place for one set track and it will kill the balloons, but it's only used as if you have used all your towers and it's towards the end of the game, really. If you reach that point of the game where you've built all the towers and you have the whole map filled with your defenses, it actually becomes a little bit laggy, but it's fine. It's honestly for fun, but yeah, just play this game if you're waiting for the next game to come out. Honestly, it's one of the best time wasters and most fun games I've ever had.